Hi guys, it's Kristen. Welcome back for another polymer clay earring video. This is another video in our artist spotlight series where I am showcasing polymer clay artists from all over. They are sharing with you tutorials on their favorite tips, tricks, and techniques for some really special and unique earrings. And I'm so grateful that they were willing to take time out of their busy schedules to create these videos for you today. So in order to show our support, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and of course, visit them on their social media and websites. I'll have everything linked in the description box down below, as well as on the screen here as we talk about them in just a bit. I'm so excited to introduce this artist to you today, so let's dive right in. All right, this is Brittany from Brit's Jewelry Shop. You can find her on her website. She's on Facebook and Instagram, and she is going to be sharing with you today how to make these really fun abstract style polymer clay earrings. She's a super talented artist. I really think you guys are gonna enjoy this video today. Make sure to check her out on all her links will be in the description box down below, and let's get into the video. Hey everyone, my name is Brittany and today I'm going to teach you how to make abstract earrings. Thank you Kristen for having me. Okay, so I've already got this slab conditioned and ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and start. So I'm going to start with this terracotta color. And this is Fimo brand. And so I do recommend Fimo or Sculpey Primo or Sculpey Souffle. Those are really good clay brands to use. And I just find they're the easiest to work with. Okay, so I'm just taking a piece of clay and working, just squeezing it and flattening it out. And I'm creating the shape I want it to be once it's laid out on the slab. And so you can do any kind of shapes you want any kind of color pat pattern that you want. Just, it's really fun to do these abstract earrings. Now we'll also be doing different types of shapes. Some are bigger, some are smaller, some are more round, some are more going to be, going to be more abstract shapes. And it, I don't really like this, so you can just start over, rework the clay. interrupting this video for one quick minute just to make sure that you know about all the amazing resources that we have for you over in our Etsy shop for polymer clay artists. So the first one is the complete guide to polymer clay earrings. This is a step-by-step -step guide, all the details of the best clays to use, conditioning your clay, baking your clay, literally everything is in this ebook, more than we can cover in videos and things like that, um, just because there's a ton of it. Um, a huge resource list with links and that sort of thing. So that's over in the Etsy shop. Another thing is the getting started on Etsy book. It's a complete guide to getting started on Etsy. So if you're just starting out and you're interested in selling your polymer clay earrings, this is a great resource for you to be able to hit the ground running, get those items listed and hopefully start making sales. Another one is our brand new product photography ebook. This one is huge. If you're selling online, your product photos need to stand out and be bright and beautiful. And sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if you don't have much experience. So this product photography ebook will walk you through the steps of getting fantastic photos with, um, you know, not super expensive equipment and things like that. Just little tricks and things that you can use to get the best photos possible. And lastly, we have polymer clay 
color recipes. So I have tons of kits over there with a huge variety of colors. I have a fall one that's out now, a Christmas one. Um, we've got pinks, purples, one with just like a wide variety. So those recipes tell you exactly what colors to blend together to make whatever color it is that you're looking for. So that's also a great resource for polymer clay artists. All right, I'm done with the little advertisement in this video. I hope you'll check us out on Etsy. The link will be in the description box down below and we are at etsy.com slash shop slash dashing and dainty. All right, let's get back to gray color and now I'm going to be using black. I'm just going to do some rope like structures now. And when you create your rope, you do need it to be on the thin side because remember we're going to be rolling using the roller and so it's going to um, flatten it out quite a bit. And so you will want it to be um, pretty thin. And so what I'm doing now is making sure that it's the same thickness. And kind of work in those areas that are still a little too thick. And I'm going to go ahead and Put this one down. Now you do not have to do straight lines. You can do curved lines, squiggly lines. Just get creative. One thing about abstract earrings, you can be as creative as you would like. You can do so many different things, so many different colors, different shapes. Then I'm going to add texture here in a little bit after we use the roller. And see what I'm doing here is kind of place, seeing where I want this to go. I think I like it better up here. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to use the roller and very carefully roll over the pieces that you laid down. You don't want to push too hard but you do need to apply some pressure. So now I'm going to um, add some texture to this. Yeah, this part is pretty fun. So, you know, again, you can just be creative and do all sorts of things. Okay, these tools I'm using are from Amazon, and I will send the information over to Kristen, and she can add that to the description. But you want to apply a little bit of pressure, not too much there. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. If it looks the way, if it looks good to you, then you can go ahead and cut out your shapes. And we'll be using these today. And 
so I'm just place, placing the cutters um, and making sure I have a good, it's going to make a good earring. And you just push down firmly. All right, so now I'm going to remove the excess clay and I'm going to bake this and then I'll come back and show you how to sand them and I drill holes in them and then I will assemble them. All right, so I have baked these in the oven and let them completely cool. Um, you want to do that before you sand them down and drill holes in them. That's important. And so I'm just taking the rough edges down, just lightly going over each piece. I'm going to sand it first and then drill the holes in. I'm just using a box, um, that way the, um, as you're dr drilling, it doesn't go through the table or anything, it has a place to go. So you want to, you want a box similar to this, so you can drill the holes in there. Um, so what I do is kind of figure out where I want the hole to go, and place them I'm going to put the hole right here. And what I do is when I'm ready to drill, I push down a little bit so it doesn't move. Assemble them, but I'm going to do one thing first. So what I'm going to do is I've folded this in half and I'm going to slide it in between there and just get those rough edges real quick. I think these turned out super cute. And now we can assemble them. So I'm just putting them how I want them to go here. Okay, so I'm going to do silver for these and then they're I'm going to super glue um, the post to the back of each one of these. And what I'm going to use for that is this Loctite super glue gel. I feel like this, this is, um, this or the Gorilla super glue works best in my opinion. Okay, a little trick I learned is if you kind of go back and forth a little bit, It'll get them close. The gap will, um, there'll be a less of a gap there. If you go move the pliers back and forth like that, it will help close that gap. And I did not plan this, but I think these look like beanies <laughs> or snow caps. I think they look so cute. All right, now it's time to glue the post on the back. And what I do is I take the cap to the super glue and the center part here, I just push down and hold for a few seconds. Just feel like it helps secure it a little bit better. And then what I like to do is go around and put a little layer on top there just to secure it a little bit more. This makes me feel better. All right, you will want these to dry. I let mine dry for a few hours before I um, mess with them again, just to make sure they're completely dry. 
but I think these, these turned out really, really cute. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like this video if you, if you liked it and subscribe to Kristen's channel if you haven't yet. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching this video today. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to show this artist your support by visiting their website, ordering a pair of earrings, check them out on Instagram and interact with them over there. That would be awesome and a way to just show your appreciation for them taking time out of their day to film this tutorial for you. Again, thanks for watching this video today and we'll see you in our next one. Bye.